now that you've heard all the rules, govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Amen. How many y'all came in to praise God this morning? And it's just excited to be here. Come on and stand up on your feet and give God some praise in this place. Because he's worthy to be praised. I'm glad I serve a good God. A God that will never fail. Hallelujah. Come on and help me put your hands together. Come on like this.
Come on, how many know that you are victorious? So you got to believe that you are victorious. So I'm going to say, how many believe that you are victorious? Hallelujah. That you are a winner. This is my spirit to tell somebody that today. Don't worry about what it is you're going through. Know that you are a winner and God loves you. He cares for you. Do I got some true worshipers in the house? Some true worshipers. I want you to just lift your hands and worship him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Because he is worthy. Hallelujah. We worship the Lord. Listen. Thank you. 
God. But your healing is in your praise. All you gotta do is surrender to God. Lift your hands. Ask Him to forgive you for all your sins. Hallelujah, because He's a good God. No matter what you've done in life, He continues to love you unconditionally. So I need for you just to worship Him right now. Some of y'all should have been dead sleeping in the grave. But God has brought you. Hallelujah, last time. Hallelujah. He hears your problems and he cares. sign of surrenderance. God, I, I don't, I'm not worried about my finances. I'm, I'm not going to worry about the children you assigned my hands to, to raise. God, I'm not going to worry about that job that keep getting on my nerves. The bill collectors that keep calling my name. I'm not going to worry about the people that keep stabbing me in the back and keep walking out on me. I'm not going to worry about that relationship, God. Why? Because I'm surrendering to a God that can handle all of it. I dare somebody to open their mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Let's go, hallelujah. 
whatever y'all want. Open your mind to Jesus. Let him fill you up right now. Let him fill you up. Let him touch your heart. Begin to open your mouth and talk to Jesus. Hallelujah. See the person of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm glad I'm at church this morning. Look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm glad I'm at St. Luke this morning. Come on, clap your hands for just that right there. Amen. Good so glad to see you this morning. I'm here St. Luke from the Baptist Church. I see so many familiar faces, so many uh, guests that are gathered. We welcome you. I, myself, and the St. Louis Prince Baptist Church family welcome you to our fellowship. Amen. 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 We are a loving church. We're a loving people. And we're a loving pastor. Amen. I think there's nothing we want to do just for you. I thank God for your presence this morning. Brothers and sisters, it's giving time. We ought to be grateful to God. Come on, clap your hands. We ought to thank God God gave you something to give. Amen. It's giving time while you're preparing to give and the deacons are uh, coming by. Get that uh, that pamphlet right under that Bible. I got some uh, things I want to reiterate with you that are very important to me. Uh, this year is 150 years and I didn't hear nobody shout about that. I said it's 150 years. Amen. Listen, listen, y'all quick to come in and quick to leave out. And y'all forget that we have a table in the best of you that has information that you want to know about. This is a form uh, that allows us to raise the money. There is, uh, uh, you can be able to get you a, um, what's the name of this? An uh, ad, yes, thank you. You're able to buy you an ad, you and your family. If y'all want to buy an ad to congratulate me personally, Y'all want to back, uh, buy an ad to just thank God for the St. Luke family and how St. Luke has been a blessing to you. I encourage you to fill this out and buy you an ad. Every member is charged to do $150. Now let me say something to church. Everybody quiet. Hold on. Let me say something. If you're not able to give $150, give what God has given you to give. Just because you don't have what we're asking for, a penny, a dime, a dollar, a five, will work. Amen, somebody. Now, I think there are envelopes that we're giving in honor of the homecoming, for the homecoming. The homecoming committee has those. Or if you go on the offering envelope, it has a slot that says others. And we want you to fill that out and be a blessing to your church family. Now, we're going to have something nice and cute for you to have on your couch or wherever you want it, on your coffee table, a booklet. You want to have your face in this. Amen? Amen. And this is out there on the out there on the table. The other thing I want to uh, get to you as we get ready to give um, is the Vacation of Bible School is next week. Amen. Amen. Somebody, come on, clap your hands. Vacation of Bible School. All next week. That's Monday starting tomorrow. At 7 o'clock, we're starting at 7, the door is open at 645. We're going to worship to God and uh, do our devotion. We're going to split in classes at 7 o'clock tomorrow. And you want to be here. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. And then after that, we're going to have announcements for our youth. Our youth weekend is coming, and we want your children to be a part, so stay tuned for that, okay? You're now in the hands of our ushers and officials that they come around and get you ready for your offering. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, as well, Denise, Sister Denise is coming in the back to give you a credit card or your debit card. And don't forget that we do have GiveLify. You search St. Louis Printed Baptist Church. Make sure it's 135 Lewis Street. Amen, Amen somebody. I didn't say St. Louis Missionary Baptist. I said St. Louis Printed Baptist. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's stand as we get ready to give.
for me. Just keep praying for me and mine. I got in my car and I started driving and looking for them. The police was looking for them. They had the helicopters out and they was looking for them. But partly while the helicopter was out, they spotted the car that she got in. I said, Lord, whatever you do, bring her back to me. Well, about 11 o'clock, partly the police brought her back home. She wasn't hurt. She was all right. She said, I just had a whole lot of stuff on my back. And the only way I thought to get rid of it was to run away. Thank <laughs> you. 
everyone that's on this altar. I know you're holding each other's hand. This young lady that's down here right by uh, Dariana is the young lady that Pastor had mentioned in Bible study that a small child that was having brain uh, surgery. And she left the hospital to come here to the church to pray. And we're going to pray for her. And we just know that God is a healer. And that God is going to bring the child out. It's already done. If you just touch and agree, it's already done. No matter what the doctors say, it's already done. So let us pray. Dear God, our Father, Father God, we come just to say thank you. Father God, we come some with heavy hearts and some just need you to just put your loving arm protection around them. God, we thank you right now that you looked beyond each one of our faults and you saw every one of our needs. And for that, God, we say thank you. Now, Father God, right now, we ask that you would just do what you've done before. Now, Father God, I'm not going to tell you to go to the hospital because you're already there. And I'm just going to tell you to guide the doctor's hands. Guide the medicine, God. But God, right now, we, we claim the victory right now. We don't have to wait until the battle is over. But we can shout right now. Father God, we know you because a lot of us have tried you. And we know you to be a doctor that never lost a patient. And so right now, God, we ask that you just heal right now. God, we ask that you would touch right now. Father God, we ask that every report, every test comes back positive, God. Father God, we ask that you would just touch that body of that child right now, God. But then, Father God, don't forget about the mother, God. Father God, we thank you that she had enough sense to know that she had to come to the house of prayer. Because you said that where two or three were touching and agreeing, you would be in the midst. And that she needed some prayer, God. Father God, we thank you for St. Luke. Father God, we thank you for St. Luke on the dead end. That when you come to the dead end, you will come in one way and won't leave the same way. Father God, we thank you for that love that runs from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Father God, we thank you right now. Now, Father God, we ask you to continue to bless our pastor right now. Continue to put your loving arm protection around. Continue to let him preach one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Father God, we thank you right now. Now, Father God, the people that are under the sound of my weak voice, that are standing around this altar, the hand that they hold, they don't know what they had to go through to get here. But God, we know that prayer changes things. And prayer will change people. God, right now, the hand that we're holding. Father God, if they need a financial blessing, we ask that you would touch right now. If they need healing, you would touch right now. If they need their minds to be made at peace, we ask that you would touch right now. Father God, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. And Father God, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for every door that you closed and every door you had to open. But most of all, God, we thank you that you died on a hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. You paid a price that you did not have to pay. But we thank you, God, that you did. And Father God, we thank you that you hung down from the sixth to the ninth hour. And God, we just say thank you. Now, Father God, we pray for the community that we're in. Father God, we ask that you would just touch and move through this community. Father God, for we're living in some mean and evil times. And then, Father God, I want to say thank you. Don't want to be to be selfish, but thank you, Lord, for what you've done on this week. God, I ask that you would just move in my family. Whatever's not right, God, we ask that you would cast it in the sea of forgiveness. That it would never tip the rise against us in this world or the world to come. But for that, God, we say thank you. Father God, we even thank you for our neighbors and our neighbors' children. We even thank you for our enemies, 
y'all get the choir one more hand. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all why y'all weren't saying amen. I don't want to say it amen because you thought about your Friday night. <laughs> now I know y'all be listening to 92Q. <laughs> Well, we glad we can run to Jesus, ain't that right? Can't you run to Jesus? Amen. Amen. We thank God for my choir. Y'all give my choir a hand. Amen. 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 Well, we're thankful for all of you that have come to come worship God. You didn't come to see nobody. You came to worship God and get a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, I thank God for all our visitors. Let's give our visitors another hand. I saw, uh, this is going to sound strange to you, but I saw two of my line brothers, Rochelle, now this is the biggest, and stand up, I need them seats, stand up, girl, you better stand up, that's the biggest, baddest, y'all give a hand, will you, that's the biggest, baddest poet in Nashville, she's from Chicago, Illinois, for everybody that's in Chicago, y'all make noise for me, amen, I thought I saw another one, but I don't think she entered into the sanctuary just yet. But I thank God for both of them, amen. It's, it means a whole lot to me. Uh, we pledged together and they see me at my worst. They see me while I was hungry. <laughs> amen, and they fed me. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. Amen, we thank God for them. Um, um, brothers and sisters, uh, I forgot to mention, next Sunday, we will be at St. Luke Gallatin at 3 o'clock p.m. I will be preaching at St. Luke Gallatin at 3 o'clock p.m. Um, through this week, we'll make provisions to see what we can do for those who cannot come. But if you will, St. Luke Gallatin, we'll get those directions, Deacon Frazier, please, uh, so that the, we can go fellowship with the family. I hear they cooking. Oh. <laughs> Amen. They're not cooking. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Somebody said, I'm going, I'm going. No, they ain't cooking. One man said, they're not cooking, so we're not going. Y'all not going now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I need y'all there. I need y'all there for your support. Amen? Amen. We thank God for our deacons. We thank God for our officials. We thank God for these ushers that are standing boldly and there to support. Y'all give them a hand. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's already almost 1230, so that means I need to get started. Uh, Brothers and sisters, turn your Bibles to the book of Joshua. Joshua. We're going to walk into a sermon series. Last Sunday, I opened our ears uh, that we must deviate from what was and connect to what is to come, organize and embrace what God has for us in the future. And today, we're going to talk about planting our foot. Planting our foot on exactly what God has for us to be. True Black, if you don't mind turning up this mic just a little bit. Just a little bit. In Joshua chapter 1, brothers and sisters, that's it right there. When you find that at the very first verse, y'all know what to do. Stand for the reading and reverence of God's word. Amen. <laughs> Bless your name, Jesus. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1. When you found that, shout. I'm going to go one more time. Joshua chapter 1. When you found it, shout. Amen. The New International Version says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, abide. Uh, Moses, my uh, servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to go across the Jordan River to the land I am about to give to them. Uh, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. That's all we're going to do right now, brothers and sisters. May God have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may be seated. Ushers, you may be relieved of your charge and service. Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch our time here, God, as we begin. As I text your word, God, touch our minds and open our hearts to receive what you have for us today. God bless every individual person here and their families, God. I ask that you use this word to bring them up, develop them, and give them the desires of their heart. And God, we are careful to thank you for looking past all of our faults and meeting us in every single one of our needs. 
God, we'll be careful to give your name the glory, honor, and the praise. This we ask in all in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, I'm going to preach from a thought, planning your foot. Planning your foot. What a subtopic, discovering where we have fallen. Discovering where we have fallen. My fifth grade year, I had the privilege of going to what they call it Southwind Elementary in Memphis, Tennessee. There, I met a teacher by the name of Mr. Asbury. Mr. Asbury taught history. Mr. Asbury taught, he taught science, and he also taught mathematics. And in that class, brothers and sisters, he enlightened me on the knowledge that I today now know. I know how to multiply, I know how to add, I even know how to divide. In the history class, he began to share with us African-American history. I know now the bondage of black African-American people on chains. And even how we have evolved to not being in chain on our hands, but in chains in our minds. I've been in that class where he not only taught me just about the history, he not only taught me my mathematics, but he also have taught me, brothers and sisters, the many cities and the states and the wide range of places that I can go instead of just staying engaged into Memphis, Tennessee, or even South Nashville. He taught me a lot of things, but one thing I did not like about his class was the science class. Somebody shout science. In science class, brothers and sisters, we had to learn, deacons, how to plant plants, or plant seeds, rather. And one thing he instructed us to do was use our index finger, dip it down in the dirty soil, make a tunnel for the seed, place it there, cover it, and begin to water it. Now, brothers and sisters, because I was ignorant and very disobedient, I desired not to stick my finger, my clean, nice-looking finger, into a dirty, dirty soil to make the seed go inside. Instead, I scooted it over the dirt on the top, put the seed on the top and covered it and sprinkled a little water. And right around the time it was time for spring, we put the plants by the door and we allowed the plants to grow. Everybody plant grew but mine. And I sat there and all the happiness that I had as I watched, all the happiness that I had in this class, the enlightenment that I had, encouraged by what was going on and what I was learning had all been deviated because I was discouraged because everybody plant grew but mine. I sat there every day going to the school, looking down at my pocket, and understanding that there was no sprout, and I began to ask the teacher, I'm tired of this. Why is it that my plan won't grow? He looked at me, he said, let me see. He got the pot, he scooted the dirt over, and he discovered the same way the seed was when I put it there. That's what it was like when he looked at it. He let me know, he said, Nick, in order for your plant to grow, or in order for your seed to get some roots, you have to get dirty before you get a beautiful picture. And can I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that one thing we're going to discover in planting our foot is we got to get dirty before we get strong. We got to get dirty before we get pretty. I, I'm trying to tell you that life won't be so pretty if you don't get ugly. And I want to tell somebody that think they keep stuck up and sedated, you won't get what God has for you if you don't get dirty. Sometimes you will have to go through Sometimes you're going to have to go through people turning their back on you. Sometimes you're going to have to go through some broke moments. Why? Because God desires to get you dirty before he allow you to get pretty. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's the only reason I'm here. Don't tell them. Say, I was dirty, but look at me, baby, now. I'm so much pretty. I'm so much wiser. Good God, I'm to check me out. I'm so much better because God took me through those dirty moments. Serve brothers and sisters that allow us to go through processes and breakings and hurt only to discover it's in those moments where God desires us to get some roots. The planting process, brothers and sisters, I discovered that we have to catch roots in order for your plant to even grow. It has to grab hold to something before it goes up. 
One thing this text will inspire us to do is allow ourselves to break some soil, break some friendships, break some relationships, break some desires, break some issues, only so we can grab hold to the very grounds in which God desires our feet to be in. Can I encourage you today, brothers and sisters, if you come in here worrying what friends you should have, trying to worry about what relationship you need to be in, if you have to have a second thought, God's trying to tell you that the ground you're trying to plant your foot on ain't the ground you need to be on. Touch your neighbor, encourage them and say, neighbor, if he in your ear, you need to listen, you need to listen. Touch your neighbor say, listen, 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 listen. Sisters, as I begin to speak, we got some things to do, but as I begin to speak, one thing we're discovering in this text is that life requires us to have some dead issues and living promises. We, we, we must involve ourselves around, if you're writing it down, dead issues and living promises. Truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, the only reason why we can't get to where God wants us to be and be planted where God wants us to be is because we get in the way of what God has already done. Uh, personally, we get uh, in the way, and in fact, churches die, preachers die in ministry because they put themselves in the way. They try to in in internalize the whole church with just their upbringing. They try to get themselves in the camera and in the lights. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, we cannot grow if your mind is stuck on you. You, 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 you can't grow if God can't get all of us in the picture. God's trying to bless the whole church, not just you. God is trying to bless your whole family, not just you. God is trying to bless your whole business, not just you. And as soon as your mind can recollect for everybody, God can bless this whole situation. So it requires, text says, it requires, text suggests that it requires us to have some dead issues and some living promises. Catch the text. The Bible says in the first three verses that after the death which lets us know that God allows us going through some dying processes, some failing relationships, some failing ideals, some failing styles and lifestyles, only to discover that there's something that's possible or inside after it that can actually grow. And watch what the text says. The text says that after the death of Moses, then the Lord appointed Joshua. Which lets us know, brothers and sisters, God had his hands on Moses. God led him through the Red Sea. God led them out of the land of Egypt. But when God got done with Moses, he began to pick something up that can live and can move and can connect with the promises of God. Can I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, you cannot be dismayed because what you're doing or what you have or what you're around dies. God says this, just because the person or the character of who you let yourself around dies, does not mean my promises dies. And St. Luke, I come today to tell you, we can send some kids to scholarships. We can give to our families and friends. We can be the biggest church, but God has to let some stuff die off. I, I come today to tell you, don't be mad when we begin to go out of numbers. Don't get mad when folks leave. I come today to tell you, there's some things that gotta get cut off. I come today to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get discouraged. Don't be sad about it. God got to cut off some things. Touch your neighbor and say, cut it off. Oh, I feel like preaching every day. Some things have to die off. He said, do not be dismayed. He said, you're going to plant your feet and discover where you are. You only discover it by the dying processes. Come in church. Come in church. Because when you see a tree, when you see a tree and the branches are not producing leaves or any fruit, you know to cut that branch off. But here's the shout about it, that if it's been planted, if it's gotten dirty, if the seed has created its root, that means it's still living. And there's something on the bottom of it that end up moving to the top of it and extending out what was once dead. Can I suggest to you that it's all right when things fall. It's all right when things go. God has something on the inside. And greater is he that I wish I had a witness right here. That is in me. That is he that's in the world. I know you thought I was going to die, but watch God work through me. I know you thought I wasn't going to make it, but watch God. So I, I come to speak for myself. I know you thought I couldn't pass it, but watch God work through me. Bible 
says, because we have to answer, now I gotta move on, we gotta go. I got two more points and I'm leaving. Since we have to have, I won't be writing down dead issues and living promises. The dead issues have to go in order for the promise to live. I give you an incentive today. My dog Smokey, y'all know Smokey by now. Amen, somebody. Y'all better not talk about me. And Smokey, like I said, he's dead. But, but a couple years ago, I took Smokey to the vet. When I took her to the vet, the doctor told me, said Smokey's been scratching, scratching and biting himself till his flesh got to the bone because Smokey's issue is not external, it's internal. I, I, I've been putting the vaccine church, I've been putting the flea and tick, and I, I, I'm, I'm misinterpreting what Smokey is trying to tell me. But the doctor said it's not that it's the fleas and the ticks. In fact, uh, Pastor, the, the fleas and the ticks are actually jumping off, but he has a disease that is in line on the inside that is affecting himself on the outside. And then I said, what is this disease? She said, you wouldn't know, but I'm going to tell you the name. She said it was thyroid disease causing him to scratch and feel as if his blood is not circulating enough so he has the desire to scratch and move so it can flow and I said what do I do I, she said I'm going to tell you that it's already over he's going to die you're going to see the effects but what I can do so he can feel better is give him an antibiotic Stick with me, church. But then she said, not only will I give him an antibiotic, but I have to put a brace around his neck. Hold on. Hold on, church. Because when I asked her, so what will this brace do? She said, well, what happens is when I put it on his neck, when he turns to bite and scratch, he can't do it. Therefore, he will stop killing himself. I said, hallelujah. She said, hold on, brother preacher. Because even if I stop him from biting, and trying to kill itself is going to limit him from eating. So what I'm suggesting to you brothers and sisters is that some issues require us to drown it out, to thirst it out, to literally keep it from getting to us. But God has to eliminate some of your desires and some of the things you want and some of the things you so need so he can get the issues out of you. I come today to tell you, you got to stop surrounding yourself around people that don't mean you no good, don't speak no positivity. You gotta stop going to the places you know you don't need to go. You gotta stop doing some things you don't need to do because what God is trying to do is set you up to get some stuff out. I'm teaching today. I know I am. Preach back and I'm doing the best I can. Some dying issues have to go about brothers and sisters. But watch the text. The text will not only suggest that we have to let some things die, but the text says we have to stand where we started. If we're going to, if we're going to be discovering where we fall, we have to stand where we started. Now the text will refer us back to why God desires Joshua to go over Moses. The text says, and will simply suggest, that Moses had not done exactly what God needed him to do. In fact, they only spent the amount of years in the wilderness and the amount of years moving out of the wilderness because we, he did not follow the law. In fact, he creates himself based on what people said. In fact, he did according to how people felt. And because he did how people felt, he didn't get what God had for him. Can I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, and at St. Luke, Bruno Baptist Church, that if we're going to plant our foot, we must stand exactly at the foundation yeah. in which God started. Stop doing all this rinky dinky stuff. That won't matter. Just do what God says. Children, I come today to tell you, the Bible still says, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and your mother and you shall live longer on this earth. The Bible still says, let not your heart be troubled. Please believe in God, not the drugs, not the money, not the temporary pleasure. Please believe in God. Believe also in I wish I had a witness. I don't know how many matches. It was not so. I would have told you the Bible still says it shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Church, if we're going to plant our foot where God has for us, we must stand where we started. Now, watch this, brothers and sisters. Watch this, brothers and sisters. He says, I will give you every place 
where you set your foot. Here it is. As I promised Moses. Hold on, church. Let me read it again. Every place where you set your foot now, two foot, I'm sorry, Angelica, two feet are exactly the two foot on your leg, on, on your leg, connected to your legs. But the Bible says, everywhere you lay your foot. I wish I had a Bible with you. The Bible says, everywhere you lay your foot. It didn't say your feet, which means, which means when you become planted with God, God don't need all of you. God just needs some of you. And I want to tell somebody, you begin to plant your feet and you begin to develop soon as you make that one step to come back to him. I come to tell you, it don't take all of that in a bag of chips. God just needs you. God don't need your fashion. God don't need you to come in here with a prince you had in a nice long skirt. God just needs you. Brothers, I don't care if you can't wear a suit. God ain't looking for how you look. You just need your foot. I come to tell somebody, you ain't got to be rich to come to this church. Just bring yourself, keep your money. I just need your foot. Touch your neighbor. That's a neighbor. I need your foot. Yes, yes, God says. God says, I need, I need to put down there are references of the Bible in Deuteronomy and numbers that suggest the foot is certainly the most important and the most intimate part of the body. Because the foot not only does it get your places, but in order to get your places, it got to get dirty. Oh, brothers and sisters, I know you got some stinky feet, so don't hide your hand. The Bible says and suggests that this is the most intimate. In fact, brothers and sisters, it is also interpreted as another uh, another part of the body. Some texts will suggest that the foot is also a man's genitals. Stick with me. I know it sounds strange, but I'm kind of enlighten you on one thing. Because any man or any woman's private part is one that we should not want to be exposed. But God desires not just to see your genitals or not just to see your foot, but he desires to expose the most intimate part of you. He desires to expose your passion, to expose your drive and momentum and motivation. Why? Because as soon as he can expose your foot and place it on the ground, whatever is intimate in your heart, God is going to bless it to bless everybody else. And I come Today to tell somebody God needs you to show off what you have. God needs you to give what you got. God needs you to give your talents to the church. God needs to give your mind because soon as God can get your mind and your foot, he can walk the church as long as the church can go. And I'm coming today to tell somebody God can't get the glory if you hide your story. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop hiding some stuff. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless St. Luke. Stop hiding your gifts. God wants to bless her. Stop hiding your business out here. God wants to bless us. So God wants to expose the most intimate parts of our passions and desires. He desires to see all of you. But then lastly, brother and sister, I got to go. I believe I said enough. Y'all gonna come up next Sunday, so I'll give it to you then. But, but we cannot discover where we fall. Nor can we plant our foot unless our knees be big. I, I believe I said it again. In order to plant anything, in order to plant anything, brothers and sisters, you have to get on your knees. And I want to suggest to you that those who are afraid to be exposed to the knee bit process, the Bible suggests to Joshua the only reason why you're going to be successful because you are able to stand on somebody else's knees process. And I come today to tell you don't be afraid of mistakes. Don't be afraid to trip up. Don't be afraid to get knocked down because soon as God has knocked you down, soon as somebody has knocked you down, God has ordained a purpose and a plan to get you back up. I come today to tell somebody, I know they're talking about you with your child, but you're going to be alright. I know they're talking about you making fun of your business, but you're going to be alright. I know they're talking about you when you're shocked, but you're going to be alright. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, for the last time, I come today to tell you, you need to get your knees bent. What is the conclusion of this text? What does the text suggest? When we're discovering where we've fallen, 
when we've allowed ourselves uh, to go through this bending process, we only hold on to verse 6. And verse 6 opened up by saying this, be strong and courageous. Y'all ain't got happy. I'm going to read it again. It says, when well, we've done all that we can do, our conclusion is this, brothers and sisters, when God is breaking you and reshaping you and giving you your foundation, say, look, I come today to tell you, be strong and courageous. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't give up. Keep climbing the mountain. Because this earth is his. And everything in it, God is able to exceedingly Acts. One thing, I'll leave you with a story. I'll leave you with a story. Little John was building a boat. And in the, in the instruction, deacons, the instruction said to follow direction. The instruction said following directions. And there's a, a thing, the last instruction says when you're done building the boat, keep instruction. So the boy built the boat and as he began to set it on the waters, the boat was cruising but the boat didn't come back. And the, and the story goes that someone found the boat, a fisherman found the boat in the process of fishing and put it in the fisherman's store. And the little boy came to the store, came to the downtown areas and saw the wall and he saw his boat. With tears in his eyes, he began to run to the man and the man looked at the little boy. He said, what do you want? He said, sir, that boat up there, I want it. How much does it cost? He says, son, it's not costing, but you gotta give something. He said, sir, what do I gotta give? He said, all you gotta give me is the instruction. The little boy went in his back pocket, brothers and sisters. He said, this is the instruction and the little boy got the boat and he began to run out the thing but he began to scratch his head. He said how in the world can I go in a store and not pay anything at all? He went back to the man. He said sir, I noticed you didn't charge me. I noticed you didn't stop me and I noticed you didn't hesitate to give it to me. Why in the world did you want to take my, my boat or take my instructions? And the man said in the manual in your instructions and on the fine print on the boat was anybody ever lose this boat after for the instructions and that they keep it, they follow instructions. And then they tell somebody, if you just follow Jesus, if you follow Jesus, God is able to give you everything you want. I come a day to tell somebody in St. Luke, God is the only one that followed instructions. Many men came down to earth to do what God had for them to do, but they failed at hand. But there was a man Jesus that came down on this place and gave people his life. At 12 years old, he was building and carpenting. And when he got older, he began to turn water into wine. When he got older, he began to give blind man sight. He began to lift dead people up. He began to get sick people healed. And it was, it was time for him to go. He gave Jesus his hands. He gave the Lord his feet. He gave the spirit to his side and he followed instruction. The Bible says that on Friday night, they marched him up a hill called Calvary. They put him on the rugged cross. They lifted him up and when they lifted him up, they began to taunt his name. Can I tell you brothers and sisters, he followed instruction. And then when it was all over, he said, now my Commit to thine hands, and he took his ghost. Can I tell you the just or why we need to be shouting? Can I tell you the just or why you need to be happy? Because one man followed instructions, saved all of our lives. Ain't God all right? Now we don't have to pay no price to see the golden city. Now we don't have to pay the price to walk that golden street. Now I don't have to pay the price to buy shoes, to walk with the Lord. Ain't God all right? Touch your name in here and say, neighbor, I'm determined to follow direction. I'm determined to plant my feet in every single way I do go. My finances will be My children will be blessed. My church will be blessed. Ain't God all right? Look to a neighbor and say, neighbor, I 
challenge you to follow direction. Stand on your feet. Shake the neighbor's hand. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Shake the neighbor. Follow instructions. Be not dismayed. Whatever be the task, God will take care of you. And you know He will. Wait your pain. What about a week? No God will make a way. If you follow direction, He'll bless your children. He'll bless your family. Bless your job. If you know He will, wait your pain. Let me see you get a glory. What about in the middle? Then no God will. What about over here? Then no God will. Come on, quiet. Father, it's your boy. Wait your pain. And you know God will. And you know He will. Shout yeah. Listen, listen. Keep, keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, we can grow and God will expand. But it takes following instruction. And many times you fail because you open your mouth too much and not use your ears. I guarantee you that people have stigma saying, look, they're raising enough money, they can't do this and they can't do that. They children ain't doing this and they ain't doing that. But let me tell you something. Come on now. It don't matter what they say. I come to tell you, God giving me instruction to give you instruction. And if we follow instruction, the Bible says in the eighth verse, and if you do these things, you shall be successful. And I believe it. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Listen, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you need the Lord, if you don't know this man, Come get planted with Jesus. Look to the other neighbor, they sleep. Say, neighbor, if you need Jesus, come get planted with him. They say, neighbor, one more time. If you need somebody to go with you, I'll go. Come on, clap your hands. Let's receive it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Choir, we in. I need your help. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, come on. We waiting on you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I know I'm the beat. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Save this, save this, save this. Savior, Savior, Savior. Come on, open your mouth. Come on. Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior. I know the people say, Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Savior, 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 Savior. I'm in the house. I'm Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, Savior. to tell you we are the ends of the earth. And if you don't know him, you won't get to go see him. That's right. That's and right. it's my job, it's my duty by God to ensure 
you get to that golden city. Listen, this is not for no fame, for talent. I will even instruct everybody, everybody, shut your eyes, close your eyes. Now, if you know you want to come, but you ashamed, I guarantee you to raise your hand. Say, Pastor, I want to come. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about your friends. They, they ain't going to save you. They ain't going to give you a peace of mind in the midnight hour. They not the supply of joy. So if it's you, I dare you to come. But then now, brothers and sisters, you are all saved and praise God for that. But if you fell and fall short and you need God, you need more of God, I dare you to come. I dare you to come. Something be dedicated back to him. Oh, Jesus. Lastly, brothers and sisters, if you need to join the church, I need a covering. You need a pastor. You need a family that'll help you along this journey. I dare you to join this church. We're a loving church with a loving pastor. I dare you to join this church. I dare you to make that step. God gonna bless that step. God's gonna produce that business to be bigger. I market everything. I'm gonna make sure you be successful. I dare you to come. Jesus. My mama said this. My mama said this. She said, Doctor, Doctor. Hey. If you're going to get Doctor, I dare you to wave your hand. Y'all know how it is when you're in a concert and you hear them. Also, you're going to. He's a Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Watch this. I know some the women going to like this. Husband, husband, husband. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This for you, man. He can cook, he can cook, he can cook. Oh, I can cook and cook and cook. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Listen, I told y'all last week, don't you leave out of here before benediction. I know, I know we held all long, little, little long this service, but that's all right. We're gonna work on that. God is gonna bless us. He can bless us at any time. Amen. Anytime that we're here, we about to get ready to go. I do want to make sure I reiterate some of these announcements that I've been saying. Uh, the choir, not the choir. I'm sorry, the uh, youth board or the youth ministry. We will be meeting, and I want y'all to sit right here directly in the middle of, in the middle of sanctuary. Uh, Sister Angelica Brooks James is going to be over there. She is our youth board director. Give her a hand. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. In, uh, homecoming committee back in the past study, uh, Cliff and Sane is over there. Let's give him a hand. Amen. We thank God for him. We're going to be ready and, and celebrate 150 years, and we're going to come back powerful. We're going to come back big, and the youth, youth are going to take us out at the end of this month. You want to be here fifth Sunday. We got some things going on this weekend. And don't forget at Gallatin next Sunday at 3 o'clock, we're going to be at St. Luke Gallatin. Listen, they're not cooking, but I want you to come. Amen. Amen. Cook your own, cook your own chicken and all mashed potatoes. Amen. 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 And vacation Bible School is all next week. And I made a, a, a interruption. It was six o'clock. We will be worshiping or, or whatever till six forty-five, and then we begin to use that time in the middle to break into our classes. You want to be here? It's going to be exciting. If you can't bring here, be here. Your children they need to be here. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And I need y'all to see Minister Fight. Those are our teachers and the, the the auxiliary leaders who want to know what they need to bring, see her right after service. You'll be around him somewhere. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're excited about this series, come on, clap your hands. Yeah. Uh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> you have any announcement? Any biggest have any announcement? Matt, yes. Pastor, uh, just reiterate, it's Sunday, September 16th, Saint Luke A.M.E. Saint Luke A.M.E. Yes. Okay, Saint Luke A.M.E. in Gallatin. I'm sorry, St. Luke A.M.E. in Gallatin. So we don't get you no directions from now to then. St. Luke A.M.E. in Gallatin. We're going to make sure we have those directions next Sunday for you. Amen? Now listen, we're not having Bible study this Wednesday. Again, it's Vacation Bible School. But I'm in another series in Vacation Bible School about the matters of the heart. 
We are discovering uh, where our heart is, where our heart is within ministry, where our heart is in our families. And we're going to take where we don't need to be and place us where we need to be. Amen, somebody. But that will not continue until June the 26th. Because we have things in the middle of the week. But I'm sorry, July 26th. The matters of the heart, July 26th. Thank you, Dean Furniture. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray us over. Let's stand. I'll meet y'all at that door back there to shake hands who I didn't get to shake. And then uh, all those who are in meetings, we need to see you in those meetings. Amen? Amen. By your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done. We ask that you bless every family represented, God. Anything that's broke, mended back together. Anything that's sick, healing right now. Touch their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. amen.